Sadly, I have to take apart my award-winning robot for parts, so I'm just going to quick document it before I tear it apart. So, here we go. This was built for the Top of the Hill Challenge at the National Robotics Challenge, and it picked up ping pong balls on a gravel field. So it was remote control, so not a real robot, but the challenge was certainly hard enough. Um, for one thing, the pea gravel that it had to drive on was super loose, and that meant that most of the competitors sunk into the gravel, and that kept them from turning, and eventually they just dug a hole and couldn't move. So I did a lot of experimenting on these wheels. I tried um, wide off-road remote control truck tires. I tried all sorts of things. I settled on paddle wheels, and paddle wheels of this specific width and design, because um, they floated over the gravel, but they sunk in just enough by about three-fourths an inch that they had grip. So that was helpful because there were inclines in the gravel field. Not steep, but by about 30 degrees. So it was grip, but it was grippy, but it still didn't sink in. The rear wheel is also paddled, which doesn't really make much sense because it's not a drive wheel. But it is um, made from two ball bearings that I got from inside a computer fan. Um, the center piece is a piece of a marker. The green ball is a Nerf gun ammo, and this plastic stuff, the white plastic stuff, is PVC. I used a lot of PVC, um, thanks to my Uncle Darren, who owns a sign shop and gives me pretty much unlimited scrap material from there. So, um, a lot of the white plastic is PVC, but this rear wheel was a bad design. It stuck down so low that when turning, sometimes these pieces would get all caught in the gravel, and limit its movement, but for the most part it wasn't a big deal. Um, and back to the front wheels, these goofy little wing things were designed to support the wheel from the other side because there's a very large wheel attached to a very small servo horn. And for the most part it worked except for over on this wheel. Um, about an hour before the contest, the I'm not sure what happened to this, but it didn't fully support it and this wheel cracked off of the servo horn. So the servo mount was completely broken off, flush to the servo, and I tried um, I tried gluing it, I used super glue, I tried a lot of stuff and nothing would work, it just kept breaking off. So I ended up having to take this piece of PVC, cut it in a circle, drill a hole into it, um, thread a screw through it, and then drill the screw into the servo. And I didn't really know if I was going to break the servo by drilling into it, but it turned out it just hit the uh, plastic inside and it didn't hit any of the electronics and it ended up working great. So this uh, allowed me to just... Hey, Booker. Yeah. Go away, please. Um, this allowed me to just hot glue the wheel right onto that plastic PVC and it worked right out. It worked all well. But um, that wasn't the only thing that was actually last minute. This claw up front definitely looks last minute um, it was built the day before because the fan that I originally had running to pick up the ping pong balls it was like a little um, funnel thing with a small remote control airplane fan that sucked up the ping pong ball that drew too much current and because all of this was um, running off the same battery I didn't have the fan separated from the controller and the servos um, when it was running the robot would go really slow and then jerkily. So, jerkily. Yeah, that's the word. No, it would run really jerky. So, I ended up having to swap it out for this claw, which I was very lucky that my brother had um, small remote control airplane servos that ended up working perfectly. Um, both tabs of this claw um, work simultaneously on the remote. If you follow the wire up, they're both connected to the same channel. And um, the uh, thing that ended up working out well with these is it's flexible paper over here. This part's plastic, but this part's just uh, flexible paper. And the ping pong ball is mounted on a stand. So that allowed me to um, pinch the stand, pull up, and then once it hit the top of the stand, close and grab the ping pong ball because this was flexible enough that it could bend around the stand. So um, that definitely helped picking up ping pong balls. Another thing that helped is that the up-down motion 
and the clamping motion was controlled by a single stick on the remote. Side to side was up and down, and forward and backwards was the um, clamping of the claw. So one continuous motion, left and to the right, allowed me to move up and clamp over the ball. So I didn't have much practice at the beginning because I built this the day before, but, well, I built the claw the day before. But the uh, by the end rounds, by the later rounds, I had enough practice that with just one motion on the control, I was able to um, quickly pick up, quickly pick the balls up off the stands. Um, another thing you'll notice is the uh, the grip uh, or the claw stays at the same angle no matter the height because I've got second beam mounted here and then mounted here, so. It, stays at the same level, which, especially with the fan, was very important that it didn't tilt. And these are mounted with very small screws, which I'm surprised they worked, but ended up all holding together. Um, so, in addition to the paddle wheels, getting over the gravel, uh, for getting over the gravel, my um, other idea was to keep it light. Most of the competitors, almost all the competitors, use metal. And the designs, I didn't. I used, again, I showed you the PVC. I also used this um, this material, which is sheet of PVC, foam core, and another sheet of PVC. It's very light. And then the rest of the body is built out of this cardboard stuff, which is, I'm not sure if you can see, it's a honeycomb structure. So that's very, very light. Now, because I used the honeycomb structure foam or um, cardboard, I couldn't mount anything directly to it. So see the servo it's I didn't want to glue the servo so it's screwed into this plastic um, with the PVC which is then glued on to the uh, cardboard so it gives it a strong mounting point and keeps it light at the same time which honestly if I had done metal it wouldn't have given me that much more it would have been way heavier